Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you three reasons why low carb diets are good for Hashimoto's in terms of symptoms and weight loss. And I'm gonna give you two reasons why they might be bad. So if you're looking for information on what diet is good, what diet is bad, what to look out for when it comes to Hashimoto's, I think you're gonna find today's video helpful. So when we say low carb, right? Well, what are carbs? Well, carbs are carbohydrates. And really the distinction most people are making when they say low carb is they're saying low simple carbohydrates because really fruits, vegetables, those are carbohydrates, but they're complex carbohydrates. And so when someone says low carb diet, really what they mean are simple carbohydrates like fruit juice, uh, added sugar, you know, sweet things like that. That's simple versus complex. Now, a low carb diet could also mean no simple carbohydrates at all. It could mean no fruits and vegetables at all, uh, or it could mean some carbs. So there can be a little bit of confusion about what you know people mean and kind of the name game and semantics. But if you didn't know, okay, <laughs> gluten is the number one worst food for Hashimoto's, and it is a carbohydrate. So gluten antibodies cross react with thyroid peroxidase antibodies, which are the main antibodies that drive Hashimoto's and ultimately make you have uh, hypothyroidism. So the first reason why a low carb diet can be good for Hashimoto's is it can be gluten free and it usually has positive benefits. I mean, most people that have Hashimoto's that adopt a strict gluten free diet for the right amount of time will generally have some improvement in their symptoms, whether it's brain fog, anxiety, joint pain, all the kind of chronic symptoms that Hashimoto's patients have. But it's probably not going to be the thing if it's the only thing you do that's going to turn your life around completely. Now, you might get lucky. Uh, you might be one of the few people who goes gluten-free and they feel 100% better and that's all they ever had to do. The reality is that's usually not going to be the case. Most people are going to have to be doing that as part of an overall strategy, which is a lot of other pieces, in order to really get themselves to maximum improvement, right? So that's reason number one. Now, reason number two why a low-carb diet can be good for Hashimoto's is that it can improve and even eliminate insulin resistance. So what's that? Insulin resistance is when your body is resistant to what insulin wants to do. And insulin wants to get glucose out of your bloodstream and into your tissues. Now people who are severely insulin resistant usually end up developing type two diabetes. But there's a whole lot of people that are insulin resistant uh, and it contributes to their Hashimoto's because insulin resistance is a big part of the top four metabolic priorities uh, for every patient. Insulin resistance is inflammatory. Uh, it definitely affects things like neurotransmitter synthesis, of course, mood, uh, fat loss, fat gain. So a low carb diet can be good because if we're eliminating, okay, if we're eliminating simple carbohydrates, that will provoke less insulin resistance. Otherwise, otherwise we call this kind of a low glycemic load. So again, low carb can mean no simple carbohydrates, like no added sugar, right? No uh, fruit juice, or it can mean low amounts of those things. So we've got gluten-free number one, because you know gluten is the number one worst food for Hashimoto's. We've got a lot of videos on that. The number two reasons why these kind of diets can be good for Hashimoto's is because they can really reverse insulin resistance, especially if you were already eating things that weren't that great, like some of these simple carbohydrates. And that kind of dovetails into number three. The third reason, okay, the third reason why these low carb diets can be good for Hashimoto's is because there seem to be, according to new research, and I'll, I'll put the a link in the description, these low carb diets seem to be more effective uh, in reducing body fat in Hashimoto's patients than other types of diets. Now, why would that be good? Well, a lot of Hashimoto's patients are overweight, but some of them, uh, they're overweight not because they have a quantity problem with the hormones, because a lot of, most of them are taking medication, at least the ones I see but they have a usage problem. And that means that the thyroid hormone receptors are not you know, using, you're not getting the benefit of uh, the hormones that you're making or taking. I've got other videos on this, but the bottom line is those hormone receptors are the main thing that messes them up and blocks them is inflammation. So you can have normal TSH, normal T4, but be overweight and not losing weight because fat is inflammatory, right? Hashimoto's is inflammatory. So if Hashimoto's uh, makes you gain weight, which then makes you more inflamed, which then makes you, you, know, you can see the cycle starts to spin, right? It becomes kind of a vicious cycle. So the theme I want you guys to notice so far is inflammation, right? Uh, gluten antibodies cross react with thyroid peroxidase. Uh, that increases more autoimmune destruction inflammation. 
insulin resistance is inflammatory. Uh, being fat, having just fat in general, is inflammatory. So these low-carb diets can be good because, generally speaking, they are anti-inflammatory. All right, now, those are the three reasons why they're good. Now, let me give you a couple reasons why they might be bad, okay? First one is, is they can be constipating because low-carb diets, especially if there's not enough fruits and vegetables, are very constipating. And we could talk about the difference between soluble fiber and insoluble fiber, uh, but it can definitely be constipating, and a lot of people with Hashimoto's are already constipated. Why? I just said a second ago, they have a thyroid hormone usage problem. And being able to use those hormones is dependent on your thyroid hormone receptors. And if you've got inflammation blocking those thyroid hormone receptors, then you're going to function like your thyroid hormones are low. One of the classic symptoms of hypothyroidism is slow GI transit time, meaning constipation. And if I take away a bunch of fiber, which you need to not be constipated, where well, there's one big, one big reason why a low-carb diet's not good, uh, for you and can make you feel worse. Now, another kind of bonus reason, uh, if you will, why a low-carb diet might not be good for Hashimoto's, it can really be too taxing for your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal circuit, otherwise known as your HPA. And the reason is, is that that HPA axis is responsible for keeping your blood sugar up between eating, okay? And if you're on such a low-carb diet that you're not really taking in a lot of more easily uh, usable glucose, then it makes it really hard on that HPA axis to work and make up the gap. So I'll just explain quickly. Uh, cortisol is made by the HPA axis, okay? So when you eat, like let's say you eat breakfast like at 7 or 8, 8 in the morning. Well, by 9 o'clock, the glucose from that meal is already gone, but you still have to have glucose. So what happens? Well, your glucose levels start to fall, and every, if everything works right, <laughs> your hypothalamus in your brain, which is monitoring your blood, says, hey, glucose is too low. So we're going to send a signal to the pituitary gland, who's going to send a signal to the adrenal glands and tell the adrenal glands, please synthesize and release some cortisol for us. If that happens, cortisol gets released and it liberates stored glucose from your liver and muscles that's called glycogen and your blood glucose levels go up even though you didn't have to eat, right? Super duper important. So that glucose regulation, I've alluded to that with insulin resistance, I'm talking about it now. That's a huge part of these four metabolic priorities for every patient. It's part of priorities number two and three. So a low carb diet, and you may have done one of these before and felt terrible. Uh, if that was you, like you went on a low carb diet or a keto diet or whatever, and you got headaches and you felt worse, that's because you probably have an issue with your HPA axis that needs to be addressed first before you try to like really uh, take, you know, taking in like no simple carbohydrates. So. Just to wrap up, three reasons why a low-carb diet could be good for Hashimoto's. Number one, it could be gluten-free. We like that. We've talked about that before. It can uh, resolve and reduce insulin resistance. We like that. And uh, number three, it can be more effective at helping a Hashimoto's patient lose fat, which, you know, fat is inflammatory. But the two reasons why it might not be good is that it can be very constipating. It can be overtaxing to your HPA axis. Now, I don't think you should try to do all that yourself. You know, as we've talked about, a low-carb diet, whatever it is, is really only one piece of a very large strategy to address your individual case of Hashimoto's. So, you guys know I've talked about multiple tissue antibody testing and immune system fingerprinting, lymphocyte, immunophenotyping. Well, the diet that we've talked about here, that's certainly something that's part of an overall strategy. So, make sure, I recommend this, you work with someone, you find a doctor that knows all these things I just talked about, and uses that as part of an overall strategy uh, to get to the root of your particular flavor of Hashimoto's. Don't try to do it on your own. I think it's too difficult and you can kind of mess yourself up. So I hope you found that helpful. We'll see you next time.